<laughs> we would just, you know, the worst thing that could happen to a student, and there's a couple out there who are now in the world doing okay, but the worst thing as a student is to make your best film in first year. Mm. Zach Hilditch, <laughs> he just quietly went about it, you know. He came from that thing of just always exploring, you know, while he was there. He just went, well, I haven't made this kind of film. Oh, now I'm going to make a film about heroin. Yeah. You know, now I'm going to do, he just always, Ali, Ali James, you know, mm. another just quiet person who just so. Um, Grant Spitori, another one. Just oh, quite man. just a quiet guy that just well, goes not, about his he's business. He's so not. Yeah, Penguin no, Empire. No, no. <laughs> Come on. I love, uh, yeah. I love Grant. I've seen him Grant. at Supernova actually okay. speak it and, okay. and he looks and Grant, like. <laughs> and Grant, and Grant um, yeah. directed my only short film that I wrote for him. Oh, I did it, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that was Tanglewood? Said, was it? Uh, no, it was, um, um, oh, it was a World War II uh, film, Legacy. Was it about um, an older brother and a boy? Yeah. Oh, and there, yeah. Was a, there was a long shot on the hill and they're yeah. having a conversation. That was yeah. great. I saw That's that. That's a great film. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, saw I, that. I I wrote it and yeah. he directed it and Brilliant. he came to me and said, oh, have you got a script? Yeah. So, no, I love Grant. Great but, So I'm allowed to say he's yeah, got yeah. an agent. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, hey. I remember him as a kid because he went to Aquinas and he was like, you know, get on the bus, super quiet. Um, oh. Just, just who knew that that was under oh, the hood? Oh, sure. But he, his film, his film. His third year film, oh, Grant, forgive me now, man. It's like, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I worship you. You are great. So, <laughs> but his third year film is a really good example. He was so driven to make a great, and they were shooting on film. Mm. They had, it was a really beautiful story that he wrote. They had drifting um, jellyfish in blue. They had dawn shots with him and his son. His wife had died. Yeah. And, you know, you're dragged out to set and, and he had a mutiny on his hands. His yeah. whole crew, the best crew in the year, were going, I'm going to kill this fucking guy. <laughs> we're, we're quitting. Because they were in the bush or something? <laughs> no, or? it's just uh, he was working them too hard. Mm. He, just, he just had this vision, which was a great vision. Yeah. But they'd been going, they're students. It's like, this is only one unit, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got jobs, yeah. <laughs> which is worse now than it ever was. Yeah. And it just, we just had to go, just that your experience as an executive producer is to go, oh, fuck, I'm not sure about what to do here. Okay, I think we should stop for a week. Mm. That was but the call. Every, that's my call. Yeah. I said, okay, pull in the plug for a week, go home and sleep. <laughs> and let's come back. That's a good solution. Cause well, that's, it was, yeah. luckily, but I didn't have a million bucks pushing through <laughs> yeah. anything. But it was a really good solution because everybody came back and they made yeah. a beautiful film. You yeah. know? But it, that's what I'm saying. You learn at uni. So to answer your question, hmm. I think there's we, collaboration. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually vertical now. It's not, uh, it's not the triangle that I came through TV. Mm. So what you need to do as a student is you're going to find the buddies you're going to work with for the next 20 years. Yeah. S- same for Frances. You know, she's making docos, really good docos, Netflix stan, yeah. big docos that are pushing the edge with her uni mates. Yeah. And increasingly being able to go, oh, I can hire an editor this time. <laughs> oh, I can, you know, I don't have to do it myself. Yeah. But I think, I think that is a really, really good way to enter filmmaking because it keeps changing. Yeah. And those, those, it's all collaboration. And you going back to that orchestra, you know, when we start off, we're not an orchestra, we're a shiffle band in, <laughs> in fucking England. Oh, and no one's on heard of us. Yeah. <laughs> no one's heard of John fucking Lennon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to hire us. We better go to Germany yeah. and learn some other songs. So yeah. it's just some things haven't changed. You get your 10,000 hours down in Hamburg, yeah, didn't they? Yeah, so you kind of got to do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. Yeah. And I think, I think you have to decide. My other thing is you've got to decide... So Zach Hilditch is a good example of this. He decided he was willing to, again, I probably these guys are going to be so mad at me. I've got a better tell <laughs> a story tag, about I'm going to tag Alison. them all. <laughs> I better tell another story about Alison to also be gender, gender <laughs> fair. But, like, <laughs> um, but you know, um, he decided he was going to do a, a shit job 
mattresses, I heard. <laughs> um, so, so he could concentrate on doing the films that he wanted to f- film. So yeah. the films he wanted to make and he was going to make. Dog like, food commercials and what, all the stuff he needed to do. He, he, no, no dog food commercials, yeah. just selling mattresses. He actually. Oh, really? He, no, so he just nothing. He didn't do the corporate stuff, ah. I hear. So yes. this is all. I, I'm, I'm old. I don't know what I'm talking about, folks. So, yeah. you know, there'll be some truth that comes back here. But, you know, that was something he did. Yeah. I did whatever I needed to do to feed the family and, and you say, that's a new fridge. Yeah. That's a that. But now I'm writing my other stuff in my spare time because I want to do that. Mm. Or my third alternative is just make it a hobby. Like be happy. Like you don't, yeah. you don't, that might be a choice you make. Like I'm going to make, which is what I now do, I'm, I'm writing novels and the odd documentary now <laughs> because I'm not trying to make money out of it. I don't have to feed any, well, you know, a little bit of money for the rent. But yeah. I'm just, I'm not trying to be anything anymore. I'm only mm. doing it because I can't live without doing it yeah. in a way. Yeah. And that's not to say the Frio doco wasn't that. It was because I felt like I could, I had something that, that was, I had, could put my skills to that would help people. Yeah. Um, and share, but but mostly I just do. I, I'm 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 selfish now. I, I'm just pleasing myself. I think an overlooked feat, an overlooked part of what we're doing, and specifically you've done in your career, is export a good version of Australian culture. Um, you must have really been thinking about that when you had kids and and that sort of freedom that those kids had in childhood, and that was a really good way to export what life was like in Australia, and I think accurate as well. So. How do you think a culture's changed now when you're writing things or planning out or advising or anything? Do you look at Australian culture and think it's changed? Has it changed for the better? What, what's your opinion on it? I think that's a, that's a great question because actually cut, that cuts back to when I grew up. I watched Hogan's Heroes <laughs> and the BBC. There were no Australian voices, mm. certainly not in kids' drama. There was nothing. So the whole rise, again, how lucky am I to come after, you know, the great early cinema, to- cinema makers of Australia. I came on that next wave after we were getting Australian voices. So that was my first thing, that we need to put Australian kids in front of Australians and be proud of that and hear our own voices not just American voices and not just... And I've heard that recently about, you know, I, I wrote for um, Home and Away for all of three episodes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I said episode 5,027 <laughs> and 5,000. Um, and it wasn't for me and it's my fault, not theirs, yeah. you know. Um, but Ship to Shore, but sorry, Ship to Shore and Home and Away and other shows... You'd hear back from Britain, they want to see sunshine. They didn't want to see EastEnders every day. <laughs> oh, shit, last shit and now it's shit. Yeah. You know, like, and now it's raining. Oh, yeah. You know, so they actually, we have, and it's the same with Perth versus Sydney. I'm sorry, I, I've become a tother sider, you know, yeah. after working there. It's, you know, it's, it's a place where you, where you, I think it's a place where two very important things happen here that don't necessarily happen in Sydney. And I lived and worked in Sydney for only five years, but um, because of our laid-back lifestyle, people have time to grow up and to smell the flowers. Mm. They're not being driven. That is a really important component of creativity as well as an important component of building your own personality, I think. And, and I think the other thing that happens later is, and I hope it's still the case because I, I confess I'm a little out of the loop now, um, that when I went over east or I th- and there was all these Perth people working wherever I went, they were cinematographers and sound, sound folk and mixers and directors, because we did everything, we, we were able to do a whole range of, of different roles. We didn't have to specialise too early and were allowed not to, oh, well, if you don't just become the best boom swinger in the universe, you're, you're gone, man. 
You know, mm. we're allowed to, you know, we're allowed to explore and experiment and go, oh, I do a bit of this, do, do that. Well, when you go over there, that's knowledge, you know, and so there's a point I, I have I have dealt with before now of telling people it's time you went to Melbourne, it's time you went to Sydney, there's so much production there, you'll thrive. Mm. You'll just, there's so much work there and they, they don't get people like you who know lots of things. Yeah. Um, and that, that, makes you, that makes you a problem solver, that makes you adaptive, that makes you more creative solution-wise than a lot of people who are just going up the narrow channel yeah. And so I think that's really important. <coughs> so I think it's really important. When you're, when, you're, um, when you're teaching kids, you know, you've got one or two students if you're doing a postgrad or 30 kids if you're doing a class, this is your opportunity. What's one part of, what's one thing of global knowledge that you give all film students now going into a world in 2025, 20, I suppose, when they graduate? Fucking learn to read. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Re- sorry. Read books. Fucking read what you're told to Bo- read. Bo- books. Books. Or- anything given to you in a university. Yeah. Read this chapter. Oh no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> like no, seriously. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm part autodidact. I know I went to two universities, but I learnt pretty much everything about filmmaking by reading books. Yeah. By reading what directors did, like all those books. Like reading. Yeah. Like, you know, Rabija and you know. Like, Rabija. Do you yeah. know what? I try to go see that guy because he lives in Chicago, I discovered his book at Murdoch Uni and I was like, holy shit, this is the business and it's a big fat textbook directing the, I got directing documentary and I got the the production one and I read that cover to cover. Like I've never read a textbook in my bloody life, school nothing, but I read that start to finish and that is the Bible. Every it's copy, a how-to book. Man, every copy on eBay I see I grab. Because well, it's and, and, and why wouldn't you read script writing for dummies? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's like how to write a script. Yeah. Like why would you not do that? Yeah. Like, so, so that's my first thing. Yeah. Nobody reads anymore. They don't even, I, give, I give them stuff yeah. online to go and this is, and this is, is the, the the red balloon the the world winning silent French film of this? This is the film written Warwick Thornton's first film. You know, yeah. like this is this, and I know they haven't even seen the film. It's like, <laughs> why are you doing this? Yeah. You're not even going to watch films or read a book about. No, yeah. I'm I know I'm old guys. I know girls, guys, everyone. Yeah. I'm old, but. But there's so much knowledge out there that people have shared. It's just, yes, you will learn as you do things. Mm. Yes, there's 10,000 hours. Mm. When, when I, um, I, I did my first degree was a literature degree at UWA and at the same time, because it was free, I started doing film at Wake and... At the end of that, I got a job as a mailboy at the ABC. I, <laughs> I just got my foot in the door. I walked around. You, you hand- told them you had a degree there, had- right? They, no, they, they, they didn't, didn't care. <laughs> they didn't give a shit. I was the mailboy. They had their eye on me apparently. Okay. You know, like they just, yeah. they, you know. It's but good. I walked around handing out the mail going, by the way, I'm really good. By the- <laughs> oh, here's yeah. your mail, by the way. What, what is this? Good. Oh, that's my latest <laughs> script yeah, in yeah, that yeah. letter. <laughs> yeah. So then I got into editing and yeah. film editing yeah. And then this um, this um, directing thing came along. So, but all that knowledge, I had so much knowledge before I started doing it. I had so much to bring to the party. I, yeah. I had so much, yeah, it's, it's I just, it, someone said it about, about, about script writing, just bring everything you got to the party because it might be the only table you get to. So just bring it. Yeah. Like why wouldn't you? Like yeah. no one's going to give it. That's that's the other thing I realised about directing at, at the ABC. It's great you're directing but if you go, they've got 10 more people, 100 more people lining up to do your job. Yeah. <laughs> so the higher you get, it's like doesn't get easier. <laughs> it's just so you got to just yeah. Bring your A game all the time. And so you don't need to when you're learning. You don't need to when you're at uni. You don't need to 
I, and by the way, I was doing other films outside of uni. I was doing amateur theatre. I loved, I loved all that stuff. I was doing film clips for people for nothing, like all the stuff everybody does. 